so hello everyone so let me introduce myself first quickly so i am a faculty in penit university from last to uh, 5 years and practicing this ai ml close to 11 to 12 years uh, started from my phd so it's it's really very interesting area that uh, uh, like ai ml domain and now today it will become like a essential tool for us so this this workshop will help you to understand what are different uh, aspects of this ai ml or dl along with that what are the basic component of that so what we will do in this particular workshop we will make a building block or you can say base of entire building right so maybe in the next workshop we'll make our own building on the top of that base so today we'll try to make the base and which like a fundamental things is really important for us so we'll start from there right so let me quickly go through and uh, i'll feel like uh, if you will ask question in between don't hesitate whenever you feel okay what's going on or or this can be like additional input if any board member or anyone wants in between they can immediately jump in and give your suggestions give your inputs give your add on information as well because that will make the things more interesting then going like a one way communication it should not be look like a lecture that uh, traditionally you are listening from my side right even even i i tried in the lecture also it should be two way communication but this workshop should not be it like coming from a traditional way it should be like more more on discussion or like like you see like more on the panel discussion where multiple members are giving their thoughts on that particular topic or particular things so it should be like that even not only for the board members if any participant also have to add something or they have some quick questions they can go ahead with that immediately so with that line let me move forward why we want this kind of workshop why we want this ai ml or dl workshop like so you can see all around us uh can i switch off switch on my camera as well because there okay let's see okay so there are plenty of things all around us so you can say even in the startups even in the electronics domain even in the law domain even in the media domain where we say advertisement industry so all around us ai is there so if you check you will find some or other way ai is involving over there or they are supporting to the employees they are supporting to the doctors they are supporting to the lawyer to make their task much easier right not only easy sometimes that will give you a faster speed as well to do the same task or you can say most of the repetitive task right now someone say if ai will come into the picture they will vanish the jobs no actually that's not true they will change the style of job right maybe you now at that time we will start actual what human being required that the thinking part so you can say uh, if if we go little bit back humans are not actually made for doing the laborious job they are intelligent they should do more intelligent job there right but due to repetition of the task we are doing more laborious job like same task we are doing multiple times without doing any additional input on that so might be that kind of job will reduce down but the intelligence task or you can say the job where you required a quick intelligence quick decision making process that will remain with the human being because still now ai or this deep learning is not mature enough to do that task right so that's 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 the thing that can build up okay no it's 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 there and you will get a more different variety of jobs so that's the future even like uh, many scientists are saying so like uh, the the evolution comes into the industry after the uh, electricity the similar kind of evolution comes again due to this ai so 
and we see it all around us now now it is like uh, freeze ac cooler sometimes like many many equipments your mobile phone your laptops they all are some or other way ai powered in some or other component so that's the beauty behind it so that gives a motivation to us let's we also need to understand what exactly ai is what exactly deep learning is then it, it should not be only buzzword for us we should understand it and we should do something on that with that motivation let's move forward and the very first question comes in our mind there are like these three buzzwords artificial intelligence someone said machine learning and deep learning now with this diagram itself few things are clear right so you can say deep learning is part of machine learning and machine learning is part of ai right so now let's understand this with some example how exactly it is going so you can say ai is any task done by the machine which is similar to the human where some intelligence involved into the picture so let me give you one example for ex uh, here you can say uh, i want to do or i want to identify a cat from the picture or i want i want to identify a tumor from the picture now there can be various ways to do that so you can say there can be like suppose someone has given only one single picture to you okay i have only one single picture now from this particular picture you have to form rules different different rules so that whenever you have next picture based on those rules you can tell what where is the tumor or where is that particular part segment right or where is that particular part now once you make those rules these rules will also help you to decide whenever you have a new picture to tell where is the tumor so now the question is that rules from where that rules will come into the picture so ai will come into the picture whenever these rules comes into the picture or you can say these systems comes into the picture that will automatically tell you whenever new information comes into the picture the correct answer the correct process right or you can say uh, uh, you can say the correct uh, uh, you can say it's already like a answer or process or 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 any other thing that human brains are doing right so any task in short you can say any task which is done by the human if that task is done by the machine right automatically where some intelligence involved then it's all artificial intelligence now the big big question comes these rules from where these rules will comes right so there is one way to define the rules that is done by the human or you can say that is done by the expert right so maybe if it is related to the radio pathology or radiologist then radiologist will be the expert they will define those rules there is another way as well another way suppose we have plenty of data and from this data we are automatically able to make the rules with the help of some you can say learning algorithm we are automatically making those rules now with the help of algorithm from the data if we are making those rules then this will comes under the machine learning right making those rules itself is the ai now how they make that rule if they are these rules are powered by the data or they are made by the data then that is machine learning right now <coughs> there can be variety of algorithm that can do that task might be that is a tree based algorithm like you have uh, my, uh, you have seen like a tree structure is there so that can be there might be it's a brain inspired algorithm might be it's a swarm inspired algorithm like flocks of birds or ant or all all those uh, species powered algorithm right so this all comes under the machine learning which will take the data based on some learning algorithm they can form those rules right now in out of this bigger set of machine learning there is a smaller part which is inspired from human brain right so that particular type of algorithm which is inspired from human brain that domain itself talk about the deep learning 
got it so deep learning the particular algorithm that is inspired from the human brain that is the deep learning now all the algorithms including deep learning which are making those rules based on the data that is available with us huge amount of data making those rules with some algorithm that is the machine learning but making the rules itself by either human expert or with the data if you are making the rules then all its artificial intelligence so means once you have these rules you can say we are in the place of ai now who will form that rule that is a different story right so if it is formed by the data then it's a machine learning and a particular algorithm that is powered by the human brain or inspired from the human brain that is the deep learning yes any quick question from here or any any add on here please so first thing i cannot see the chat because right now i am in the full screen so you have to speak up so please go ahead yes any quick question from the board member side from the participant side or is it clear so i think we don't have any question yet uh, not cool. that as well okay great so let's move forward so now let's understand these three so with the diagram we we quickly observe it okay what what next like what these terms are so let's look into what ai is so ai is like so someone say it's 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 a big question like it is really program that look like human or it is a program that operates internally as humans are doing or a computational system that we have intelligently so what do you think that's that question to the participant what do you think out of three what is ai is it really look like a human that is the ai or which operate internally that humans are doing that is the ai or it's a computational system that we have intelligently yes participant said what do you feel like which is the most appropriate one second two, and third second and third okay so if you have a competition between second and third then which one is the winner third one third one so the most appropriate yes most appropriate answer is computational system that we have intelligently why it's a computational system ultimately if you take any of the algorithm they all have addition subtraction multiplication this kind of operation internally right so ultimately it's a computational system that we have intelligently right so that is the most appropriate answer if someone say <coughs> a robot that look like human actually it's a just a mechanical piece it is not a human it is not ai until unless that mechanical piece do not have something computer or some some system that can behave intelligently then it's not a human so means externally if anything look like a human then then it's not a ai at all right now another big question like when so i think everyone know this man at least those who are belong to the computer science right so what turing test says turing test says definitely humans are intelligent that we all agreed right now when we say machines are intelligent so they are saying if machine is producing some response or some answer right and if humans is also producing an answer right so let me say it's a answer dash if the difference between these two so you can say so it's let's say it's represented by a dash and this is represented by a so you can say a dash is close to a then this particular machine this machine is intelligent right so that is the way how turing like alan turing is saying 
if a particular response produced by the machine and the for same problem if that response produced by the humans both are indistinguishable means you cannot differentiate between those two then that machine is intelligent machine getting is it clear to everyone very simple definition you can say sir could you explain it again sir okay so let me say uh, another example so for example here we have a picture and this picture contain a human now i show this picture to the machine and it will say it contain a human now the same picture i will show to the human and that person will also say it this picture contain human then this machine is intelligent why because their answer is similar to the human answer and we assume humans are intelligent that is the assumption definitely and i feel like this assumption is not a incorrect assumption like humans are intelligent getting so if both answers are same or you can say now by looking these two answers no one can differentiate which answer come from the machine and which answer come from the human then it's a intelligent machine getting is it clear yes sir cool so in 1950s like uh, when this uh, ai was powered by the man made rules or you can say simple rule based system then definitely like ai was not a winner at that time like but slowly slowly it evolves and they there are many things comes into the picture now once you understand okay this is the ai now what machine learning is that's a big question because that is the second part that we see what machine learning is so few persons have given lot multiple definitions one definition i really loved that is this so what they are saying machine learning is a study of algorithms that improve their performance which is represented by p at some task with some experience so they require three things performance task and experience so that is represented by this set now let's understand these things how exactly it look like <coughs> so let's take one example here let me say i am taking this example so where is the task the task is recognizing a hand written words so you can say suppose i have written this a i have written this p or sometimes let's say written this c now these are the images hand written images and i have to tell the machine you recognize what is written over there got it so that is the task that we defined <laughs> now how will check the performance suppose this machine this for this image machine is saying a for this they are saying it's b and for this they are saying it's c so you can say it's 100% correct but unfortunately if they are saying this is not b this is 8 so then you say okay it's not 100% correct it's close to um, like 70% correct close to 70% getting because out of three two answers are correct one answer is incorrect so you can say their performance is close to 70% so it's a like a 2 by 3 right now the experience the important part is the experience how will give the experience the experience will comes by this human labeled images we will give that information to them right so let's understand in in like with a with example right so how exactly it is doing so this is your traditional programming when you give give the data you will write your own example or your own program so program means your code 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 in the sense here it means it's a rule so when when you say it's a rule that like you will give your own rule and based on these rules you will give you will get a output right that we discussed the rules previously now in case of machine learning we will give the data we will give the correct output and rules will automatically made by the system 
right what rules required that is automatically made by the system or made by the program that is the machine learning right if you are these rules you are giving our expert are giving this is a traditional programming that we see right but in case of machine learning we are giving a lot of data we are giving the correct output and based on that your program itself will appear or those rules will itself appear right now let's look into one example okay can you recognize where is two so can you say here this part is this look like two what about this 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 that right. they look like two all agreed they look like two yes sir but maybe the second last one on second line maybe three or maybe two this one no the next one this yeah, one yes sir yes yeah. yeah someone say it's a two someone say it's a three it may depend upon the handwriting but let's assume it's like a bad handwriting uh, something wrong with the two only okay now important question how we are able to recognize this is two yes this is important questions we we are able to recognize okay these are the two but how we are able to recognize this is the two yes anyone Uh, yes. Based on the approximate size, like approximate shape. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any any other quick answer? How how we are able to recognize this is two? Okay. Let me. Let so me in like kindergarten yes. or like uh, elementary school, we learn what what two looks like. we learn to draw to in like that uh, math notebook and we also mm -hmm. saw like other people's handwriting also like how they draw to so right that's right. like feed into our brain right as if we are seeing it for a long time now yeah yes so we have a lot of experience you can say right so now the question is suppose i am showing this image to a kid let's say one year kid is really that kid will able to identify where is two what do you think yes or no that kid will able to identify where is two in this image i uh, say so probably not probably no but after let's let's say one year or maybe two year that kid able to identify where is two correct yes sir what happened in between in these two years uh, sir maybe the experience of like reading many let many uh, numbers and all different types of numbers hand written printed and all so means suppose uh, uh, like uh, for example uh, a kid of one year and uh, we just give them a book okay just take this book and understand what will happen we uh, are not they won't be able to understand right so so then what additional we are doing sir we are uh, offering them guidance like we are telling which one is one which one is two right so means we are guiding them we yes, are sir. first telling them which one is correct then after multiple iterations or after multiple times they automatically start recognizing so once we say like uh, this is 2 or this is 1 or this is 3 in machine learning domain this particular process uh, what we are doing as a parent or as a brother or sister that is known as the labeling clear so we are giving the label information and once we label it means we are including our experience into that label because we are giving the correct label the correctness of the label is saying we are giving our experience what we have for a longer time to the machine in the form of label 
so that is the transform of the experience or you can say uh, you can say transportation of experience from human to machine got it so that is the labeling process anyone doubt any in in this anyone any doubt okay so now as you say like there are plenty of machine learning algorithms you can say ann is there decision tree svm neb based k nearest neighbor k means random forest dimensionality reduction gradient boosting algorithm and many other actually right out of them if you focus on this one only the artificial neural network that is the domain of deep learning so today that word which is very famous that is deep learning that is coming from this ann artificial neural network so now we will jump into that side what what different things are there so how this ann look like ann has these three major components one is the input layer this is the nodes second is the hidden layer that is again different variety of nodes and for next is the output layer which contain the output so now you can say what is the difference between these three right so let me give a good example to you uh suppose i want to do a cat versus dog classification so what classification means you have to identify that a particular image contain a cat or that particular image contain a dog that we want to classify or we want to differentiate between them right so if you have a image that image we will try to give as in the input layer right now in this input layer here we have some connections these connections contain some weight so we'll talk about weights what is the use of those weights right so these connections some weights and based on these weights here they give you some information or you can say some <laughs> features sorry some features and based on those features we are making the final decision so you can say if this will give a right answer or this this value is higher let's say its value is 0.6 and this value is 0.4 so you can say this is a cat in this image right and this is for dog so this is the overall structure of neural network a simple neural network where we have input layer where you pass your input either in the form of image or in the form of number i'll come into that how image will be look like but ultimately you'll pass the numbers in the input image hidden layer will try to make new features try to transform that image so that you can make some particular decision right and output layer will give you the decision from that uh, input itself so these are major components of this nn so this is simple like old nn in the era of 1980s but when you say deep neural network just what additional is here here we have more and more hidden layers right now what these hidden layers are doing that you can look into the these images right so you can say if you want to identify this person who is this person so that you have given into the input so something look like this right now from this they generate a new feature and the, some initial features will look like this then they have more complex feature you can figure out like nose is visible eyes is visible and few other features are visible then they compare combine more features and they make more complex feature like some some part of the end face is visible right and at the end you have a final output that will combine all together and you will say okay this person is this or you can say this person is george right so in that way your deep neural network is working so initially when you have a simple neural network in that case we have we are generating only one variety of features or only initial features and based on that we are getting them output but in deep neural network we are generating more features from the existing features and finally you are giving some output and that is more powerful as well okay so we we already seen this right what are different applications i think you can see those applications all around you so one can be in the computer vision side so you can say your mobile phone 
uh, autonomous vehicle gesture recognition and and in can say you can say in the medical domain plenty of places like in the precision agriculture there are lot of application in the computer vision right similarly in case of voice or signal domain there are plenty of application again in the signal domain as well so you can say voice based command you, you know like uh, alexa google like or or siri they are all this particular uh, application of this voice based system right or you can say not only these if you say signal based systems so you can say your eeg signals ecg signals you interpret them and uh, taking some decisions right and third bigger domain is nlp domain where we talk about the natural languages so suppose you have made a system that can understand the english that can understand the hindi that can understand the marathi and able to do the similar task as humans are doing then it comes under the bigger domain of natural language processing so it can be recommendation system it can be sentiment analysis it can be machine translation machine translation when we say means language translation english to hindi or uh, english to french or hindi to marathi or uh, hindi to english something right similarly we can do sentiment analysis sentiment analysis means you are talking about like what uh, what is the behavior of that sentence it's a positive sentence or negative sentence or something like that so there are plenty of applications of this deep learning right that we will understand now out of this application what are the major task that we are performing so first task is the detection we will start some detection so detection can be from the speech or text that can be from the images that can be from the like uh, you, you can say it's a uh, fake news detection so these all comes under the detection right where you have existing data and based on that data you are making some rules and then you say you have to detect the false information you have to detect the cat you have to detect the diseases so this is the detection similarly we have the prediction where you say what should be the next try to predict the future right so might be it can be stock price prediction might be it can be recommendation system might be it can be weather forecast so these all comes under the prediction then there is a third domain or bigger domain that is the generation part have any one heard about deep fake this deep fake term might be many of you able to yes sir see in the yes sir deep fake so this deep fake actually the part of generation so what they are doing they are generating the images they are generating the videos they are generating the text which doesn't exist in this world means some new text some new visual art some new music even there was a uh, you can say there was a image that is generated by the ai system and that sold like uh, close to 20 or 25 million dollar in a auction so means if you are able to make a image such image with the ai system then you do not need to do anything else at least for many many years that's good enough for us right so similarly like uh, we can make uh, we can generate more text we can generate more designs even like uh, nowadays like speeches are generated by the ai system itself so there is a big domain that is the generation part itself definitely there are some uh, like uh, some rules are coming now in nowadays in the picture otherwise like uh, this this generation or this fake news can create some critical conditions as well or critical situation between countries or between states or something right so now let's understand the overall modeling or you can say overall pipeline or you can say life cycle whatever word you like you can take it but ultimate things is like a, how how to do that task what are different components over there so the very first task for deep learning or machine learning you require the data right so you have plenty of data available but that data is raw data might be that is not useful for you at that particular position or that particular uh, <coughs> way so what we have to do second task is the cleaning of the data or preparation of the data now this cleaning like 
might be the data is blurry so you are cleaning or there are some false data that you have to clean you have to do the labeling so while you do the labeling actually you are transferring your experience you are trans transferring your intelligence to the data right prepare the data clean the data manipulate in a appropriate format like is there may be like you are, if you are dealing with the tabular data there are some missing entries also there that you have to remove right or or some some data form you have to change might be there are some categorical data then you have to convert into the numeric form as well so these all comes under the data preparation now after this data preparation you decide a learning algorithm and make your model that is the you can say trained model right Once you use that learning algorithm, I definitely will check with the new data and you can find out if your model is giving appropriate answer or not. Might be possible like in the first run your new model. So in that case, you will improve the model, right? And then this cycle will continue and until unless you are not satisfied with the model, you can re-improve and again retrain, again test, improve, te train, test, improve, train, test. In that way, you can uh, go on the cycle till you are not satisfied so any quick question till now anyone any quick question if you have yes anyone any question in the chat Are you able to understand properly, first of all? Sir, I have a Am question. Am I audible properly? Uh, like most of our focus yep, uh, these previous years, uh, most of the focus of the community was on building a better network so that you can get better results. And they didn't really focus much on data. So now we are seeing a, mm -hmm. this new trend like that we have worked enough on models. So let's focus more on data now so how we can uh, okay. you know clean data better prepare it better so that even with the existing model we can get a uh, better performance so how important is that process Very true okay so so the important part will be uh, you can say now we are moving towards the data centric approaches. So let me give you an example. Then you will, you will better understand. So uh, we was working in a project. I think uh, like uh, Pulkit was also there in that project, like uh, in the BEL one. So over there, we have chosen a algorithm, let's say a model, let's say that is the very recent model. That is the YOLO, right? For the object detection. It was a simple task. That is the person detection. Right. Now, what happened at that particular, we have trained the model with the data, whatever we have, and we figure out that model is not working well when we go to the actual deployment. Right. It fails, actually fails. Now, we, we, we thought like, what can be the reason? Right. So first thing is really architecture is wrong. Then answer is no. The model is not wrong. Model was pretty okay. The actual problem was the data itself. Why it was the problem? Because we are dealing with a different variety of uh, location, different variety of challenges. So it can, it was like uh, maybe you have to detect a person in the night as well. You have to detect the person in the day as well. Might be the person is partially visible. Might be that person is in the somewhere like uh, some occlusion is there right and there can be like a different locations as well so might be he is somewhere in the in the you can say hilly area or that can be in the flat area that can be in the agriculture land there can be a lot of bushes so ultimately what we have done we have prepared the data on those domains or those particular area 
so and then only we are able to get a good result so means data preparation or data centric approach now is very powerful or actually we are focusing towards that side right because with the or you can say model centric approach you can achieve up to a certain level let's say that level is 90% but if you are looking forward for 95 then you have to look into the data as well you have to revisit the data and find where specifically you have to look into the back track like a backward side and then you have to look into the what particular type of data is creating the problem and then that kind of data you have to improve further then only you will get a good results like when and this comes into the picture when we jump into the deployment part like you deploy actually so if you say like uh, i have a data set i divided into the train and test and they they are giving good results that's fine for that training process but while you deploy it into the field then it fails due to they do not know the structure of the field they are not robust enough to handle those structures handle those backgrounds and that make a big impact actually but it so now we have not only focus on the model centric we have to focus on the data centric as well getting yes sir cool cool so now let's move forward so what kind of applications where we can use this machine learning or deep learning right so you can say it's a hand written recognition with that character recognition or speech recognition or or uh, you can say uh ma many other it related fraud or you can say spam detection or or you can say malicious activity detection or specifically like uh, targeted advertisement if you look into the media side so it can be personalized advertisement right so these these all things where you can utilize the this machine learning or deep learning right similarly you can say finding the pattern generating new data as well generating new images as well generating new paintings as well so these are all places where we can apply the machine learning right so if any problem where you can not define a specific rules right fixed number of rules and that problem is like not a deterministic problem i i hope many of you understand deterministic and non deterministic so deterministic means where you have few fixed rules maybe it can be 100 rules or 200 rules but if you are able to solve that problem with a 100 rules or 200 rules then also it's a deterministic problem but if you are not able to solve with that 100 or 200 rules then it's not a deterministic it's a non deterministic problem where you required a, like a, it, it will not solve in a polynomial time so that's that's the things that uh, comes into the picture let me take one example so because many of you say what's what's going on so let me take one example suppose i have a task that uh, finding a classification between cat and dog just simple examples i think it's it's a very simple example cat versus dog now how you will define the rules yes anyone how you will define the rules so that you can easily identify this is a cat this is a dog yep so now from the participant side how you will define the rules to identify that Uh, this image contain cat and this image contain dog suppose i want someone give you a task like make the rules for that so how you'll make the rules yes anyone participants please speak up so we can write rule uh, that there is a difference between their ears i guess okay so one can be ears and any other guess like is that for yes yes good here is they have said 
Okay. What else can be possible? Please speak up, yeah. What are the rules like uh, by looking I think another here? Main distinction for cats would be here. Yes. Yeah, a cat's whiskers. So a cat has whiskers in the arm person. Uh, so it's nice to you please repeat. Yeah, I said uh, whiskers will be a, like, also a major point. The like cats have whiskers in dog form. Okay, okay. Yeah, what other rules we can make? To identify that is cat or dog. What we feel. Is these three, four rules that we have tried to make. Come on, guys. Yes, anyone... before, you can also type in the chat. Yeah, yeah. You can type in the chat or you can speak up whatever you like. Uh, sir, usually if we uh, look at at, uh, look at cats and dogs, usually the dogs will be bigger in size, not always. <laughs> but so you will introduce different might be possible like... Uh, so you will introduce different, different images of yeah. dogs and cats, a cat to the ML algorithm. And uh, according to the given data... No, so no, no. Uh, 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 yeah, that's true. That that I'll come in in that part. But uh, here the question is like, suppose uh, we have to define some man-made rules. So how we can do it? some rule system, rule-based system. So what can be the rules? That's that's the important question. So suppose if someone say, okay, the size can be the differentiating factor because cats are small, dogs are little bigger. Might be possible like if you are taking a picture of dog from a distance and taking a picture of cat from closer, then might be it can reverse also. Yes, sir. What do you think? Yes, sir. True. Then cat will become bigger and the dog will become smaller. Yes, sir. Ultimately, we like it's a very difficult to define those rules so now if we cannot define those rules how to solve this problem so similarly just just go back in during during our childhood is anyone saying okay if this is bigger, then it's a cat or this is smaller then it's a dog is our mother father or our uh, parents or parents or our sister or brother they say that they never say okay this looks they just say it's a cat or dog and rest of the rules we itself make right our brain itself make those rules so that we need to understand how that system is doing that how this system is making those rules those kind of tasks, so you can say this is very simple task, but here we are talking about much more complex tasks. So if the simple task cannot be done with the rules, then definitely complex we cannot done with the making those straightforward rules or predefined rules. So in that place, this machine learning or deep learning comes into the picture. Now you can say if this is so powerful and that came close to 1940, why it is not comes into the picture before 2012 or something. So the reason behind that, the data along with the computation power, these two was the reason behind that, right? Now, <coughs> one important part, if you look into the traditional ML algorithm, they are restricted with handling big amount of data. They are not able to handle huge amount of data that is producing nowadays. Along with that, 
even if you improve the data but their accuracy is like uh, go up to some certain level but not beyond that but this is not the case with the neural network what neural network is saying if you have enough data if you increase the data then and if you have computation power as well right to train those bigger models then definitely your accuracy can improve so if you are a smaller neural network maybe it is getting this much accuracy if it is a medium size then it is getting more accuracy if it is larger size then it will give more accuracy over there right so means you are improving every time when you have more data more variety of data along with the computing power as well. so that's the beauty behind this neural network algorithm or you can say deep learning algorithms what are different different tools required so you can say python jupyter notebook and these are some libraries that is heavily used in that now we need to understand while we are using this deep learning there are variety of learning algorithms as well as we talk about like uh, training the models requires some learning algorithm so there are three different variety of learning algorithm one is supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning so how you can differentiate them that's that's really important so whenever you have a data let's say we have data that is represented by x and if you have a output also with that so x can be let's say images right and if that images contain the labels as well what is the correct label then this will go under supervised learning because while you learn a particular model or learning based on a certain algorithm you have input as well and you have a correct output as well so this kind of algorithm learning algorithm goes under the supervised now there is another variety of algorithm that is unsupervised in this way the data we have only the x we do not have any y now you can say why it is not there there should be some y otherwise how you will say this is correct or not so there are certain problems itself that doesn't have one single y there can be different variety of y for different person like so you can say <coughs> what's what is the example for that so let me take one example is spam detection email spam you are getting emails and you are make, trying to make a spam detection right so <coughs> same email can be spam for one person but can be useful for another person can anyone give example here how same email can be good for one person important for one person and not important for second person can anyone give one example just think on this and give one example for example if uh, a student is looking for an undergrad college uh, right. for a person who is already in undergrad the email regarding the information containing undergrad graduation colleges is useless to him and the person who is just completed his 12th that information is uh, important for him right very correct great great thank you yeah any other example very correct any other example uh sir if you are receiving uh, promotions or advertisements about the product we didn't register for mm -hmm. that could be spam could be spam for whom and could be not spam for whom say so for someone who is not interested in the product or hasn't hasn't uh, made any queries about it it will be spam right right right, right. so suppose uh, i am looking for buying a house then those product information which is coming from that uh, domain that is useful for me but suppose i do not have any plan to buy a house right then that information is spam for us right? so it means the same you can say same rules cannot be applicable for all the person or you can say 
one single answer cannot be the correct so there can be multiple correct answer so in that case you are trying to get the pattern from the data you are trying to make the cluster from the data right and these kind of problem or uh, this kind of uh, problem domain is known under the or uh, they are known as unsupervised learning let me give you one more example uh suppose you have uh, uh, like in in 12th when you pass the 12th right so you have given let's say 100 questions okay these are the questions if you if you take it then it will be useful for the in the in the exam right now the person who wants 100 out of 100 how many will be the important question for them all questions definitely so all will become important but if some person say okay i just want pass in the exam just want to pass then how many will be the important question for them what do you think uh sir so it depends on the passing mark right so yeah so you can say maybe 40% for the safer side will be the important so out of 100 only 40 questions are important for that person rest they just leave right so it means again question is remain same what is important but it is changing by person to person getting so that is also comes under the unsupervised kind of concept right when you say how much data is important when you say like uh, that that is the uh, well well known examples when you say this is important for us right so then then it comes under the unsupervised now the third variety of learning that is the reinforcement learning right now this reinforcement learning comes when you want to make some policy when you want to make some n number of rules that comes together not fixed rules but n number of rules that comes together and you want to make that kind of policy then reinforcement learning comes into the picture so now you can say what the input output so the input output for this is a reward or uh, you can say the punishment so let me take one example suppose uh, you have uh, like uh, one kid is there in your house and uh, suddenly some family members are coming over there right so let's say your uh, let's say your uh, fufa ji and dua ji came into your house and that kid is saying for some reason or for some action that person is saying oh pagal fufa ji just say kidding like that so what will happen suddenly bua will become so happy and C has given a chocolate to that person. So C, that was that kid got positive rewards. So C, what he understood at that 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 kid understood. Okay, this is a good, this is really positive things that we have to do. The next day, what happened? Like uh, another family member came. Let's say mama, mama, right? And uh, he said uh, to mommy, oh, pagal mama, right? And suddenly mom. Mama, we come so happy. Oh, maja aage, maja aage, and he given one chocolate to him, or that kid. Again, he got a positive reward. So he again make a rule. Okay, saying pagal means it's fabulous. You'll get chocolate. But in the next day, that kid reached to the school, right? And in the school, <laughs> what happened? He repeat the process. And when principal ma'am came into the class to understand, he said pagal ma'am. now what happened the teacher who was there he slapped and then immediately he reformed the rule okay in the school this is not correct but in the home it is correct so ultimately there is no correct answer he got rewards or punishment and based on that he are make he is making the rules and that comes under the reinforcement learning got it everyone getting yes sir yes right uh, now now let's come to the like how to implement so this is very generic example so now you can say how how it is useful for us so let's say i want to play the chess right so in the chess board 
when you see the chessboard there are many states it state means so the first state when all are all the pieces of chess all there right so that is the first state once you move one of the chess piece then they think the another state when other opposite part move the you know, their their chess piece then that is the next state and based on every state you are making some rules and based on their rules you are deciding in your actions so these all comes under the reinforcement learning so here you can not say like one single move is correct or incorrect but depend upon the state of that chess board you will get some reward or punishment right or you can say positive reward or negative reward instead of saying punishment positive or negative reward so these kind of information or these kind of uh, problem domains are comes under the reinforcement learning where you will utilize the reinforcement learning to solve the challenges getting everyone any doubt till this point no sir cool now there is another thing that is the features so features actually this is the terminology that is coming from the machine learning domain but you already seen these information so for example you are deciding the house price so what are the different factor that will decide the house price so that can be number of rooms that can be the area of that house that can be the air pollution of that particular city or that particular location distance from the facilities that can be economic index of that city right and maybe security as well so there can be many other parameters as well right even that is depend upon the society as well it is depend upon the you can say uh, uh, distance from the hospital distance from the school or or many other things so these all become the features so whatever information that is impacting the decision that is impacting to decide the decision these all are the features So, right. Similarly, if you say cyber attacks, let me take this example. Cyber attack. So definitely, IP address is important to look into that. Timings are important. Location are important. Communication or type of communication they have done. Traffic details. Might be some other things are added over there. So that will decide the. Uh, you can say cyber attacks. Right. So these are, for example. Uh, let's say I I want to. Solve solve some other challenge, right? Like, so let me give you a problem. Like suppose you want to buy a laptop, then what? Or you can say you want to try to predict the price of laptop. Then what can be the features? Yes, sir. Sir, RAM. RAM definitely. GPU, CPU. GPU, CPU type. uh it's a uh, rom it's ssd or hdd the rom yes sir the screen size yes sir battery size if battery size company model yes, and sir which generation it belongs the cpu yes it's that cpu generation cache memory even if you see there are plenty of factors again connectivity like it says a usb connectivity or hdmi connectivity how many ports it has battery lifetime if you are talking about the laptop right another thing service from the company what is the service style service level so these all will become the feature while you decide the price of that particular laptop here we also decide the weights so you can say we 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 what we are doing so suppose you want to predict a house price definitely you cannot give number of rooms equal weight number of uh, like house area equal weight air pollution equal weight you have to decide the importance what are more important what are less important as in day to day life we are doing and these importance actually decided by the weights right so what weights are doing weights are trying to give importance for a particular feature how much it is important to make the decision right so that is the purpose of 
weights over there. Anyone, any doubt so far? Guys, any doubt so far? No, sir. sir. Cool. Yes. Okay. So now there are two types of things. One is the linear regression, another is the logistic regression. Sometimes this is known as the regression and this is known as the classification. Maybe you, you have seen these terms, regression and classification. So logistic regression is also known as the classification. So in case of regression, let's say house price prediction. So you will say some number, some real number. It's a 10 lakh, 15 lakh, 20, 30 lakhs, whatever, or 25 lakhs. So you have some numbers. So that is the linear regression. But in case of logistic regression, you have a binary value, zero or one. So you can say you, you reach to the doctor and you will ask, okay, I have this disease or not. So it will say yes or no, right? So that is the logistic regression. Right? Now, in case of linear regression, we are trying to find a linear line that will satisfy or th uh, that will have the minimum error. So here error comes into the picture to identify which is the best line. Right? That is the linear regression. Right? Now what is what we are doing here? We are trying to make the it is also possible you are making y cap i minus y i. Right? That is also possible. Right. Or you can take mod of y of i minus y cap i minus y i. That is also possible. But what is square are doing, they first of all, they will give you positive value. That is very true. That will come from the mod as well. But here the emphasis larger differences means that they try to reduce the error which are making more impact into the system right but sometimes they fail when they fail when we have some outlier so this outlier removal is comes under the pre-processing part so let me give you an example what is mean of that outlier suppose you have some points here 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 and one point somewhere let's say here right so if this point is there so then your line can be look like this to try to satisfy this but due to this outlier this line is giving very bad result but if you remove this outlier in that case your line will something like this and this is the best condition so you have to think like you have to remove this outlier before the training otherwise this squaring will create a negative impact as well then it comes into the picture linear versus non-linear. So there are many problems which can be solved linear function, but even we have a lot of more problems that cannot be solved with the linear function. So let me take a example here. Can we draw a line to classify this one? So that one line can classify, okay, one side is one class, another side is another class or this example, not possible. So what can happen, you can make circles that can easily classify and definitely circle is non-linear. Similarly for this, you can make this kind of graph that can solve this problem. So non-linearity comes into the picture, right? Now in case of logistic regression, you are seeing classification. So cat versus dog. So you have to identify where is cat, where is dog. So this is just one example. Similarly, you can say, a disease versus non-disease. So that is known as the logistic regression. Right. So how deep neural networks solve this problem? So let's take example. Again, it's like a bind a computer system. So what it is taking, it is taking these features into the input. So you can say screen size, it can be hard disk, it can be processor, it can be RAM or battery time, maybe some other uh, features as well. Now what you will do, you have given some weights. So you have given some weights to the screen size, you have given some weights to the hard disk, you have given some weights to the processor speed and others. Now what next, you will try to find a linear equation here. So you can check out this is simple linear equation. 
In order to convert this into the non-linear, we are adding a rational function and that function is known as activation function. So in few minutes, we'll talk about this activation function, right? Now what this activation function will do, it will produce a result that will be your output like you have to buy or do not need to buy or what is the price of that particular system. So this activation function actually introduces the non-linearity into the system. Ready? That is will give you the cost function. Now here, if you look into this equation, this can be transformed and rewritten in the form of W transpose X. So you can say you have X array here, W array here. So you can say W transpose X can give you the entire equation in one go. Right? So it's like a simplest form or simplest representation of the equation. Right. So let's come to the activation function, which introduce the non-linearity. So there are many activation functions. Few popular are the ReLU function, sigmoid function, softmax function, tanh function. So we'll see them in in next slide. So what they are doing, they are taking the data and introduce non-linearity into the picture and pass that output. So that non-linear things will come from the activation function. So one of the activation function is sigmoid, right? So you can pass any data from minus infinite to plus infinite, but it will produce, it will produce a value between one and zero. So you can say input will be minus infinite to plus infinite and the output between 0 to 1. So ultimately, this particular function in between introduce the non-linearity. If it is a linear, definitely it will not be between 0 and 1. Right? It will be some bigger value. As they increase, they also need to increase. It will. It is giving a non-linearity. So you can check out the function here. Right? And what is the function? You can see equation. The equation is 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus z, where z is this input and this theta z is the output. Right? So what we are doing? We are doing W transpose x plus b and we are introduced passing through this non-linear function so that it will give you a non-linear output. We have another function that is the ReLU or Leaky ReLU. What this ReLU is doing? It is making a, like if the value is negative, then it will give you the zero. If value is positive, then it will pass as it is value. So definitely this is also non-linear, right? Now here we have leaky redo as well. So they are saying once they make all zero means you are making dead that particular neuron. I don't want to make them dead. Let them alive, but with lesser life. So then instead of redo, they are giving the leaky redo over there. So that have like if negative value, they will give some values, some output, but that is really very tiny so that they will not die. Then we have another activation function that is the tanh. The behavior is look like sigmoid only. The only change, the range. So you can say here input is minus infinite to plus infinite and the output is minus one to one. That is the range. So the good point, it is a mirror image from this and that helps in many, many applications, right? Now there is a bias. So let's understand what is the role of this bias. So the role of bias is looks here. So bias actually do not change the, you can say the behavior. They just move through towards the X axis or sometimes Y axis. So that is the role of bias. So you can you can understand with the line equation. So you have y equal to mx plus c. So now m will decide what should be the tilting point. So suppose that m will decide this or this or this. What bias decide? Where is the intercept? So this will be here or this will be here. That is deciding by the bias. So bias will not change the behavior but they move from one direction to another direction, or you can say in one axis. Right? So that is the purpose of bias. Now, here we have 
another reason to introduce the bias. Suppose we have passed an image that has all zeros, or you can say you have passed a black image. In that case, your entire system will have all zero value, right? So means all X values are zero. So in that case, bias also comes into the picture because that do not have zero value, that has one value always. And the bias value will give you a life to the system so that it will not be dead. But if you someone has given inputs all zeros and bias is not there, then your system will be dead. Now, if you say image, ultimately, there are a lot of uh, applications in computer image. So how image will be look like? So the image is look like with three channels, red channel, green channel and blue channel. So your system is not looking image as we are looking into that. They look into only the numbers. What are different numbers over there? And based on that number, they will decide how image will be look like. So now in order to represent it, what they are saying, they will convert these all three dimensional data into one dimensional data. So it has 192 values. So suppose you have an image, eight cross eight, that is the size and three, three is coming from the, you can say channel. So it's a red channel or green channel or blue channel. From there, it will, it will give a information. So it's a, like a, they, you have three different channels, right? that will combine together and give you a complete image. So in order to give the input to the system, we can convert them into the one dimensional array. So you can say first we are picking all red, second we are picking all green and third we are picking all blue and you can make a one dimensional array over there. So then it will be look like this, your matrix will be look like this. So you can say you have these many of numbers in pairs. So you have your data points. So first data is represented here, second represented here, third represented here. And this entire matrix will represent the entire data. Similarly, you have Y data points, say Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, and M number of data points that are there. So what you can see, this is representing one image. This is representing second image. This is representing third image. And with respect to first image, this is your output. With respect to second image, this is your output. So in that way, you can make the entire system into the number form. Because ultimately, these numbers will go as input. Ready? So any doubt so far? Anyone? Any doubt? So I'll take uh, maximum five, six minutes more and then we'll close. Any doubt so far? Okay, let's move forward. So how we'll make our network here, how it will be useful. So what we'll do, we'll take the input, right? So we have all the inputs available here that will pass to the system. And then these values, like you will, you will compute the ZX. What will be the ZX? This will be the linear function. That is W1, X1, W2, X2, W3, X3, and so on. Now this ZX will pass through the activation function and then it will produce the AZ. And this AZ will come into the picture. Now for Y, this will act as an input. Right. So in that way, your neural network is working. So you are taking the image, you have weights that will give you a linear value or linear equation. And then that will convert linear to nonlinear. We are utilizing the activation and this process will go on as you have multiple levels, then this process will continue to generate more features from there. Right. Now for logistic regression, we have a loss function. So previously we have seen a loss function that is y cap minus y let's say i squared loss right. that we have seen. But in case of logistic regression, this will not work very well. So for that, she have produced a different variety of loss function. And this is known as the log loss sometimes. Right. What is the beauty behind this loss? And this is specifically for the classification task. So what is the beauty behind that? If your output is one, let's say y is one. So then it will try to make y cap also one. 
And if your y is zero, it will try to make y cap also zero to minimize this. Minimize means you want to reduce the loss. And that's the beauty behind this loss function. Now, once you say cost function, if you combine all the losses, definitely for one image, you have one loss. Second image, you have second loss. Third image, you have third loss. So now what, what you will do, you will combine all the losses from your entire data and that will known as the cost function. So the overall objective is not to minimize the personal loss, the objective is to minimize this cost. Right? That is the overall objective of the algorithm, to minimize the cost. Right? Any doubt so far? Okay. Now you can say how to do that. What is the way to do that? So we can take information from our maths. That is the calculus. And calculus help us to do that. So let's understand how exactly it will help us. Right? So I'll take a few minutes here because that is really important. So suppose this is a graph of W versus this particular like uh, you can say cost. So you can say J value. So if you are somewhere here, you have to move in this side. And if you are somewhere here, you have to move in this side. Right? What, what exactly we have to do if your slope, if you say this is the slope, if your slope is positive, then you have to reduce the value of W. And if your slope is negative, let's say this one, if your slope is negative, you have to increase the value of W. Right? Now, how much you have to do, make it up, increase or decrease, that depend upon this value, dj upon dw. That is the, you can say slope value. Why it is important? As you are here, you can check out your slope value is higher. As you go closer, your slope will more flatten. And as you reach into the minimum point, your slope will become zero. So means if you are in the top, your slope is higher. Means you have more uh, improvement to do. And that is itself coming from this partial derivative. Right? So what gradient descent will do, it will take you from here or any, any other point and reach you till the minimum. So how exactly it will do? What is the equation or what is the idea behind that? So the idea behind that is this equation. Just simple equation. So you can see your W value is equal to W minus alpha of dj upon dw. Now what this will do? So this will quantify how much you have to move and which direction you have to move. So direction will come from the slope and sorry, slope. So you can say if it's a positive slope or negative slope. Right? And the value is also coming from the slope, right? What is the slope value? So you can say the theta value that is also coming from the slope. So with the help of that, you are able to optimize or find out the best value of W. Okay, so any doubt so far? Okay, so if you are able to understand that, then it's like uh, really you have make a basic building block for the neural network. So you are able to understand how to train the things. Now there is another term that is the alpha. So importance of alpha is if your alpha is too large, so then might be it will suit up outside. But if your alpha is too small, then it will converge very late. So you want to find the best value of alpha and the alpha value between 0 and 1. So you have to figure out what is the best value of alpha. Definitely it should not be very small, definitely it should not be very large. So it will be something in between. And this finding the best value is known as the hyper parameter tuning. So this how to do that, that we can see in upcoming session or sometimes later. So now ultimately what entire process is that can be represented in this way. So 
one is the forward propagation. Why am I running backwards? Because have... I like running. It's fun. Sorry. Wow! Oh! So much fun. Some message. Okay, so how how exactly it works? So it has a forward propagation and backward propagation. So definitely in the forward propagation you have some weights, so that will multiply with your inputs, and then you will have a equation here. Right now you will pass through the activation function, you will get a value. And finally, it will produce an output. Now, based on this output, that will be your A, it will compute the loss. Right? Now, what this loss will do, it will utilize to back propagate, and this loss will help us to update the value of W. Right? You can check out here. So, this is the way how you will be able to update the value of W. Right? So this is overall concept, or you can say it's a basic understanding of the utilization of derivative to train the model. Right. Now, if you say bigger network, definitely you have more values and you'll move ahead. So it's just like a matrix a representation of the network. Right. Now, one last thing, that is the softmax function. So what is the purpose of this? So suppose you do not have one, only two classes. We have more than that. Right? In that case, your function or your simple binary classification will not work out. In that case, you require a different variety of function. So that is the softmax. What exactly it will do? It is producing a probability distribution. of the output and you can check out which has the maximum value that will be one remain all will be zero so i'm not going in depth of this maths so it, you can say just the soft max suppose you have five classes so it will produce the probability of each class to be happy right that is the purpose of this soft max and whatever have the maximum probability will say it belong to that class and rest will become zero so that's the beauty behind the soft max right so this will be the last slide and uh, then we'll close this so what is the forward and backward forward means you are taking an input multiplying with the weights computing the activation and you move forward at the end you are computing the loss value or you can say the final output that is the forward propagation now what is the backward propagation based on that loss value so the based on that loss value, you are updating the W's. And this update is based on the, you can say, derivatives of loss function with respect to W. And that will help you to update the W. So that is the backward propagation. Forward, you are computing the output. And backward, based on the output and the actual output, you are computing the loss. And based on that loss, you are computing the derivatives, and that derivatives help us to update the weights. Once the entire process is done, then you have the updated weights. And that's the entire story of the, you can say, most of the neural networks. They have forward and backward propagation. So that's it from my side. So this is like how, how it will be look like. So you have initially low level features, then mid level features, then high level features, and they are able to produce the results. So guys, that's it from my side. I, I know like it's a really long session and after a certain point, you are not able to pick up. So don't worry. So we can, we can do later part again as well. Because I know like, uh, after one hour, the room is flooded and because the session was really long, so we'll do it later as well. Where we talk about only the training part, only the learning algorithm. And then you will see, you'll, you'll understand in much better way. Okay, guys. Thank you from my side. I'm done. Uh, okay. 
thank you sir for your session and also uh, if you have any questions you can leave them in the chat box